Hey folks, Matt from RightOfTheImage.com. 4K and 4K ability in cameras, for me it's essential. For most people now it's essential. But we do have people that constantly say, well, I don't even shoot video or 4K is not necessary. I do tend to think these are the same type of people that were the last adopters of digital. We're still shooting film when everybody else was shooting digital and we're still saying it wasn't there yet. You know, the, the tail end of adopters. That's what I believe when I'm hearing this feedback. Tamas Varga writes in and says, do you have any data or survey that shows everybody wants 4K in their DSLR? I would really like to know because the last survey I saw showed over 80% of DSLR users never use the video on their camera. As for megapixels, I find the 5D4 30 megapixel plenty enough for 99%, even the D750's 24 is enough for proper work. Yes, you can see more details when you blow the picture up to 100%, but it's mainly for pixel peeping as the clients, 99%, will see no difference and be perfectly happy with the results that even a 24 megapixel D750 can provide. So the 5D Force 30 megapixels is well within the range. If you need more, they have the 5DS and the 5DSR. That's canon. I know, but no 4K. I understand YouTubers have to make videos and find some subject they find important, 4K, 4K, 4K. But if you actually go out and shoot every day a proper DSLR like D750, D810, 5D4, is still the right tool with their proper ergonomics, menu system, durability, customer service, even without 4K. If you mainly shoot video, these cameras are not the best tools for that. Sony produced six cameras in the A7 line and none of them has dual card slot, touchscreen, but they have QC issues with the variations in overheating, poor battery life, cumbersome menu system, and as I heard, their customer service is questionable. Yes, their sensor is amazing, but there's more to a camera than that. GH5 seems to be a game changer, but only for videographers. I don't think anybody will throw away their full frame or even APS-C, DSLR, or MILC for the still image quality of the GH5. So we can call it a promising but crippled camera with its 20 megapixel medium, uh, micro four thirds sensor. It's a shame because it really has all the features missing from a Sony A7, for example. This is very interesting feedback and thank you, Tomas. Um, I want to delve into this a little bit. Uh, as far as data and surveys, I got a very, very important one. Sales numbers. The only people, the only companies who aren't experiencing declines in sales right now is Sony, Fuji, and Panasonic. Canon and Nikon are having declines in sales and in declines in revenue as a result. That speaks volumes right there. No matter what survey you're looking at, no matter what survey data, they can all be manipulated. But when the companies come out with their quarterly sales volumes and their numbers, that's, that's their announcement to their stockholders. They don't monkey around with that stuff. They really can't because legally they have to tell you what they've sold you know, in their, in their, their quarterly um, valuations, findings, and numbers. So that right there... There's my data right there. Uh, the only ones that are making gains, and we even saw Sony come down a little bit, but Panasonic and Fuji selling great guns. Just, there's my my backup or my where I'm drawing a lot of my conclusions from. I think that's the most pertinent data is people speaking with their wallets. It's the only area of cameras that we're not seeing a decline. So that's my first point. Um, and then... As far as uh, only YouTubers using 4K, I would disagree with that because most working pros now are finding that it's a mix of video and photography. You could, if you look at the Visual Science Lab, Kurt Tuck, very prominent, been around for a while, written lots of books, and he's really, really um, seasoned photographer, a pro. And he shoots a lot of video. It almost sounds like he's shooting more video than he shoots photo now. And it's very important for him to have 4K and have very capable cameras. He's shooting it entirely with a Sony system now. And he's gone from Nikon, he shot Canon, he shot everything over the years. But he's shooting Sony now for that reason. And if you look at his blog and look at his ongoing posts, you'll see an ongoing theme that working pros to stay relevant, to stay employed, to be, stay making money, they need to adapt. And he's finding more and more of his clientele uh, customers, more of the demand, is wanting, if not solely video, at least a mix. So who are these people that are saying, 
they only want to do photos. I think that's a dwindling um, professional base. I think it's shrinking more and more and more. I think video is the way of the future, and if not solely video, at least a blend. So that would be my point there. And the, 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 the problems with Sony, yes, I have commented on those same problems, the overheating, the battery life, etc. But a lot of people are using them for professional work and happy with them. Kirk is, for example, and he's making good money and he seems to be busier than most people I know using Sony's. That's his choice. Uh, he can have, you know, he's owned lots of systems. He had the Nikons, he's had the Canons. He could be shooting whatever he wants and he's chosen to shoot Sony and has now for a bit. It's a, it's a good example. As far as the GH5, I would tend to disagree with you. Is it the best ultimate image quality? No. Is it good and acceptable and capable for 90% of what anybody's going to shoot? Yeah, absolutely. Especially the GH5 with its latest and greatest abilities, better high ISO, more resolution. It's a very, very capable photographic camera. And the key is with today's climate and what the customer is demanding, it's an exceptionally capable video camera, which gives us the best of both worlds, which is what we need and what working pros who wish to stay employed and wish to stay making good money in this um, climate, in this, uh, what the demand is now, you, you need to have both pretty much. I don't know too many people that are doing really, really well like we used to be able to do just shooting photos. So that would be my um, feedback to your very insightful comments. And I appreciate them. And I always like a good debate and things that make me think. Thanks, Tomas. What do you guys think? Uh, do you agree more with Tomas? Or do you think that my counterpoints are more uh, in line with what you guys think and what you feel the current climate for professionals or even just amateurs and hobbyists in general, what you would need in a camera? Let me know in the comments below. This is an ongoing topic. It always will be. It's always you know, as new technology comes down the pipe, how much do we need that? And then you've got the people clinging to the way it used to be and not saying they don't need that new stuff. And I always say, hey, there's companies out there giving it to us in the system along with the best photographic ability as well. For instance, the Sony's, you know, an A7R2. Kind of hard to um, say I wouldn't buy one because it does good video as well, you know? Anyways, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Let's discuss it. Let's flush it out a bit. Thanks again, Tomas. Stay tuned. We'll be back soon here at artoftheimage.com.